pay college athletes for their contribution to their collegiate athletics programs. If you're a college athlete and put close to seven to eight hours of work a day into sports, you would think that you should be able to earn money for helping your college athletics program. But, if, but that isn't the case right now. By the end of this debate, you will find out that the NCAA makes about $10 billion a year. Next, the, while EA Sports, a video game producing company, were making billions of dollars, the players were broke. And last, when college athletes play a sport, it's basically their full-time job, and they don't have time to get a job if they work seven to eight hours a day. The NCAA makes about $10 billion a year. That's a big number. Well, and while the NCAA is making $10 billion, the players are making zero. Here you know how college students live on like ramen on a day-to-day -day basis, and think about them playing sports as well, and still getting zero. The players work for it though. They put in the hours in the practices and the games, and the workouts. The players need the money for injuries, and probably if they don't have a scholarship to pay for the rest of their education as well. The NCAA aren't the only ones making billions of dollars. EA Sports are making lots of money as well. While EA Sports are making billions, the players were broke. According to Forbes, EA Sports got sued for not paying college athletes, college football and basketball athletes. EA Sports lost the trial and had, and had to pay as much as $4,000 to about 100,000 current and former football and basketball athletes, called football and basketball athletes. And also according to ESPN, EA Sports have made more than $1.3 billion alone in the U.S. EA Sports isn't making any more college, college sports video games, but that $1.3 billion could have gone to the players instead of EA Sports. With EA Sports not making video games anymore, this could be the start of getting college athletes the pay that they deserve. As said from Chris Isidore from CNN, up until the season starts, the workload trails off to 50 to 60 hours a week. That eases to 40 to 50 hours a week once classes and the season actually starts. When their sport comes, it's that athlete's full-time job. Students put more time than an average paid worker in our society today, with our students putting in about 50 hours a week and our average paid workers only putting in about 47 hours a week. With this much work, these athletes should get paid. Because of the amount of time these athletes put in, they do not have time to get an actual job to support their college needs. Because of the vigorous work hours these athletes put in, students should get paid to play in the NCCA today. <coughs> According to Alligator.org, college athletes already get paid $90,000 indirectly in college scholarships and stuff. The NCAA should not be paying college athletes for their contribution to the collegiate athletic program. If they did, only the rich schools would be the good schools, and the smaller schools would not have enough money that, to pay the athletes. The money that the athletes get are going to the free stuff that the athletes actually get, including free housing, free, free food, and free travel. The college students are also paid $500 to $1,000 weekly or monthly to spend on their personal needs. We'll talk about those later on. If you believe that you have to work hard to get a good paycheck every single time, then believe that college athletes should not be getting paid. By the end of this debate, you too will believe that college athletes should not be paid for their contributions to their collegiate athletic program. If the NCAA paid all of their athletes, the schools would not have enough money to fund their athletic programs. According to NCAA.org, there are over 460,000 NCAA athletes, and if each one were to get paid, that's millions of dollars going to athletes when they could be going to scholarships, getting better facilities, and even scouting. The bigger schools will not have a problem to pay the athletes, but think about the smaller schools, the D2 and the D3 schools that are barely holding on to their programs as is. There are many schools in, the, in each state that don't even have programs in the first place, and if they were to make an athletic program, they might have to shut the program down because of the because they wouldn't have enough funds to pay their athletes. Not only does it make it hard for some schools to pay the athletes, but it also makes it the rich schools the only good ones in college sports. If we were to pay college athletes, only the rich schools would be the good ones. They could pay the best athletes the most money to come to their schools. Let's say a Division three school barely has enough funds, as it is, to fund their college programs and now they're forced to pay their athletes a certain amount of money per year, 
and they won't have enough money to fund the whole program overall. And then all those athletes who have trained their whole lives to come to that point won't know what to do. Harvard University is worth $32 billion. Right now, they put most of that money towards academics. But if we were to pay college athletes, they would put most of that money towards athletics. Another school that would be one of the best is Texas University. They put uh, $163 million towards athletics. That's the most out of any Division I school. Athletes go to college and they get their school paid for. According to alligator.org, a university spends about $90,000 on one athlete a year. That's for their housing, their travel on away games, their food on away games. Sports.vice.com says the athletes get, depending on what school you go to, $500 to $1,000 a year. Considering that they get their meals for free, that's plenty to pay for their basic needs such as clothes and all that. There's no need for more money. Good job, the bosses.
some of their education. $10 billion is a lot, but you will need a lot of money, and there's over 460,000 NCAA athletes. And to pay each one of those, that's millions and million, millions and millions of dollars that are going to the athletes when they could be going to giving some other players some scholarship opportunities. My opponent also said that EA Sports sh isn't paying the athletes the money that they deserve. But think about the smaller schools, the Division II and the Division III schools. Have you ever seen a Division II or Division III athlete on the front of a cover? No, neither have I. And many of those athletes don't even make any money for the school. Should they really be getting paid for something that they're not, for, for should they be getting paid even though they're not making the school very much money? My opponent also said that because they, because many of these athletes have full-time jobs, they, they don't have full-time jobs, and that football, football or a basketball or whatever their sport is, is their full-time job, they need money for everyday life. But Texas A&M will pay students $10,000 stipend every single year. And if, if you do the math, it comes down to about $833 a year. The average, the average student that works gets about $1,200 a year. The difference between $1,200 and $833 is the fact that many athletes don't have to pay for their housing, or their food, and they don't have to save for their college. College athletes should not be able to be paid for their, college, for their contributions to their college athletic programs. Schools would be forced to pay their college athletes, and the whole program won't have enough money to fund the whole program overall. The richest schools, or the schools that put the most money towards athletic programs, would be the best, because they can pay the best athletes the most money. Students already get money monthly from the school, and then that's enough to pay for their basic needs, such as clothes and all that stuff. This is a quote from Judy Rose, the athletic director of the Charlotte 49ers. I don't think athletes are being exploited. I think there is a symbolic, symbolic relationship there. Without, without the university platform for them to compete, there's no exposure for them, no. So that experience alone and that opportunity creates a platform for them, for visibility. I just think the money issue that has clouded what the real purpose is, regardless of where the money is coming from and how much is coming in. I want the whole story to be told to be told about the value of an education and put dollars towards that. 